We actually have quite a number of different tax numbers in Germany. Especially if you are self-employed, it is important to keep track of which tax numbers you receive from whom in Germany and what you actually need these tax numbers for. And since the whole thing is, well, I would say pretty confusing, I thought I would just go through the three most important categories of tax numbers that you can have. The first tax number you probably received in your life is your personal tax identification number. You get it at least if you are born in Germany, more or less at birth. If you are not born in Germany but immigrate at some point, then you receive this personal tax identification number, kind of like a welcome gift or something. That means everyone in Germany has a tax identification number and it does not change. So your whole life you have the same tax identification number. It's like your fingerprint. And this tax identification number, for example, is on your income tax assessment. You also have to give it to your employer if you are an employee. And then once a year you get a printout of the electronic wage tax certificate. It's written on there. And your personal tax identification number is usually also on your income tax assessment. Even when you open a bank account, for example, if you open a business account with Contis, you will be asked for a tax number. It always concerns the personal tax identification number and no other numbers. Distinguishable from the personal tax identification number is the so-called regular tax number. So it's simply called tax number. This tax number is a kind of reference number at the tax office and you get it when you, for example, become self-employed. Because when you are just starting out, you need to fill out the tax registration questionnaire. This is the tax office registration of your self-employment. And you will receive a letter from your responsible tax office in response, which will have your tax number on it. This number is really like a reference number. This means you always have to provide this number when dealing with the tax office. With this number, the caseworker at the tax office can then open your case and assist you with any questions. This means that this number is also the most important number in your daily life and your self-employment because you must always provide it in all correspondence with the tax office. Under this number, you submit your tax returns, etc. That means this is the number you actually deal with the most in everyday life. This is also the number you should write on your invoices, 2001. Because this regular tax number is not tied to your person, but rather to the tax office, it can indeed change over the course of your life. And it can actually be the case that you have multiple regular tax numbers at the same time. This happens whenever you live in a different place from where you work then you have a residential address and a business address. If this is in two different municipalities or if two different tax offices are responsible for these regions, then it may be that you have a private residence tax number and a private business location tax number, so to speak. This means for the private tax number, that is the private tax, which is the income tax. For example, you would have a tax number for your income tax at the tax office of your residence and a tax number at the location of your business, which would then apply to your VAT return or your trade tax. That means you also always have to check which types of taxes these regular tax numbers are for. On your invoices, you should, of course, write the tax number from the tax office of your business location. And naturally, this tax number can also change. Because these tax numbers, as I mentioned before, belong to the tax office, they might change if you, for example, move and a different tax office becomes responsible for you, then it changes. Or you get married and you and your spouse now file a joint tax return. This can also result in you both being assigned a new tax number as a married couple. Or you start a new business or expand an existing one, you take over a business, meaning something changes entrepreneurially. This can of course also lead to you being assigned a tax number. But it can also seemingly happen out of nowhere if the tax office internally, for example, changes or updates some system, restructures, etc. It is possible that you might receive a new tax number, therefore you should make sure to always use the most current tax number. By the way, the most common question I get from founders regarding the regular tax number is what do I do when I register? Because unfortunately, in the tax registration questionnaire, which is the form you fill out when you start a business, you are asked for your tax number, which is kind of strange because that's why you are filling out this form. You fill out this form so that you can get a business tax number afterward. By the way, you can always leave this field blank. So if you don't have a tax number yet, you can simply leave it empty. But if you have a tax number that, for example, relates to your income tax and your income tax return, then you can also enter this tax number for your income tax in the tax registration questionnaire. And then, under certain circumstances, you won't get a new tax number, but you can keep the old tax number from 2001. However, it will be updated so that you can now use it for VAT. However, it's important not to get confused here. If in doubt, simply leave this field blank in the tax registration questionnaire. The third tax number, or I should say the third category of tax numbers that you can have in Germany is the VAT identification number. And as the name suggests, this VAT identification number primarily or exclusively pertains to value-added tax. 
And as the name already suggests, it is also an identification number. This means it does not refer to a specific tax office, but to you as an individual. And you need this whenever you have international business relations, thousand. So either when you are a customer of a company from EU foreign countries. By the way, you become one relatively quickly because many online tools, task management tools, time tracking tools, or even social networks when you place ads there are usually based in Ireland, Luxembourg, etc. This means you have a business relationship with a company from EU foreign countries. And whenever that happens, you must provide a VAT identification number. You also need it if you have customers from EU foreign countries. That means for all types of business you have with companies from EU foreign countries, you need this VAT identification number and you get it from the Federal Central Tax Office. Just like your personal tax identification number, you also get the VAT identification number from the Federal Central Tax Office. By the way, this number always starts with D, a country code, but this D is also part of it. I would generally recommend that you always apply for this number. Even if you are a small business owner and perhaps have nothing to do with VAT yet, it can't hurt to have this number. To have, because as I already mentioned, you can also become a customer of a company from EU foreign countries quite quickly. If you forgot to do this when you started your business, you can still apply for a VAT identification number at any time. It's very easy to do so through the website of the Federal Central Tax Office. You can also find the link to this website and the application form below in the video description. And finally, an important note on the topic of invoicing. You can provide your tax number, that is your regular tax number, or the VAT identification number on your invoices. You do not need to provide both. I would always recommend that you choose the VAT identification number because, as already mentioned, the regular tax number is like a reference number from the tax office. That means in this number. The regular tax number contains a whole range of personal information, and I would personally recommend that you do not write this on your invoices and then send this information around the world, but instead use the VAT identification number and simply include it in your invoice template. This way, you meet the requirements and no longer need to provide your personal tax number. I hope this video has been helpful to you and has shed some light on the whole maze of German tax numbers. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave us a comment under this video and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you are self-employed, then you might need an invoicing tool, a bank account, or perhaps a tax advisor. We are happy to assist you with that. I will link all the information about our offers here for you, but of course, you can also watch the other videos on this channel first, for example. Consider this option or perhaps that one.